Looks open to page 265. You did problems five through seven for homework last night. Let's take a look at that and we'll review a little bit before we get into those problems. We've been talking about uh, waves in the last chapter, but in this chapter we began looking more specifically at one particular type of wave. And what is that, Kendall? Mm, chapter 17. We've moved from chapter 16, which was waves in general, chapter 17, which is all about... Oh. Does it sound like you know this sound. one? Sound! There we go. Good. Sound is correct. And we said sound is what type of wave, Michael? Three -dimensional. It is a three-dimensional wave. It is also a... Audrey? No. Longitudinal. Longitudinal wave. It's a series of compressions or interfactions that emanate outward in all directions from the source... And uh, by the way, I said, for my, my differentiation between sound and noise, sound is simply the wave. I said my definition for noise is a perception of sound. Once you perceive sound, you hear noise. Sound is the wave. That's my personal definition. I don't know if that's uh, no Webster's definition necessarily. That's how I choose to differentiate between the two. Um, so when we say something's noisy, that means I'm hearing way too much sound. Yeah, I just need to hear less sound. Fewer seventh graders, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, uh, we said sound travels at different speeds through different media, uh, but in air, which is usually what we hear sound through, not that you couldn't, any, okay, be honest, any of you little spies when you were little and uh, you maybe your parents are talking and you're like, I wonder what's going on out there. You used to put your ear to the door or put, maybe put your ear to a wall to try to eavesdrop. Or maybe siblings used to listen in on siblings, what was going on. Okay, I, I, will, I will admit to this. Uh, my sisters shared a room. I was the only boy, so I had my own room, which was kind of nice, except when company came. And then they got my room, and I ended up in the living room on the floor. Uh, but anyway, um, so my sisters would be talking. I'm like, I got nothing entertaining going on in my room right now because I'm by myself. So I wonder what's going on in there. Just put my ear to the wall and listen in. And, you know, pick on them about whatever I heard later, you know, because that's what brothers do. They pick on sisters, right? Um, and so, <laughs> kind of like, not when I'm so much older. Ha -ha. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't know, Audrey, you're kind, of a, you're kind of a good bit older than Peter, too. I don't know if he tries to pick on you or not, or if you're just... He tries. He tries, but he doesn't work too well. Anyway, see, I was right in the middle, so I was close enough to my older sister I could pick on her, like you would be with Jane, and, and old enough over my younger sister I could pick on her, too. It was great. Anyway, uh, there were other times my parents, they'd listen to stuff, you know, in the evenings. We didn't have a television, so they'd listen to radio shows and things like that, old-time radio, and... They were funny. My parents were laughing. People on the radio were laughing. I wanted to laugh. So I was like, the door. The only problem was my room was right at the end of the hall, and right next to my room was the air conditioning intake. Mm -hmm. So you know when the air conditioning turns on, that loud sound of the air flowing through. Oh, every time that turned on, I was like, well, I might as well go lay back down in bed because I ain't going to hear nothing for the next five minutes till that thing turns off. Anyway, but uh, the sound travels through other things, but let's, unless we're eavesdropping or spying on people, we generally listen through the air, right? So how fast does sound travel in air if the air is zero degrees Celsius? Kendall? Three, 331.5 meters per second. That's at zero degrees Celsius. At any other temperature of air, since temperature makes a difference, we'd have to account for this by using what equation, Michael? Um, e possibly in our homework last night as well, accounting for the air temperature, because temperature makes a difference. So this was one of the two equations we had in the first section. We also talked about a wavelength and frequency related to wave speed. Not going to get into that too much here. Um, we said that temperature is one of the things that affects the speed of sound, especially in air, especially in gases, but it would work for other things as well. Is temperature considered a positive or a negative factor affecting the speed of sound class? Yeah. Positive. It's going to increase the speed of sound as temperature Increases, decreased temperature, speed of sound decreases. Um, what was another factor, though, that affected the speed of sound, Audrey? Um, hardness. Hardness. Is hardness a positive factor or a negative factor? Positive, positive factor. So the harder a substance is, of course, that can't apply to solids and liquids, that only, or liquids and gases, only applies to solids. But the harder, the more rigid a solid is, metals especially, the faster sound waves can travel through them. Um, 
And the last factor, Handel. Density. Density. Is that a positive or negative factor? Negative. That's a negative factor. And that affects all states of matter. The more dense the state of matter happens to be, the more it's going to slow down uh, the speed of sound through it. We looked yesterday then at this uh, phenomena caused by a moving object emitting a sound. And we said as an object moves, sound that is emitted, those compressions and rarefactions, those wave fronts, are pressed into each other ahead of a moving source. Behind the moving source, they spread outward. And we said that because the speed of sound is consistent in a forgiven medium, that as the wave lengths are compressed, because wave speed must be consistent, what must increase in front of a moving source class? Wave length is compressed, which causes an increase in frequency. This is the key. The moving objects, you don't see wavelength, but you can perceive frequency. So ahead of a moving source class, we get an increase in frequency because the wavelengths are compressed. To the rear of the moving source, you've got an elongated wavelength, which means we've got a decreased frequency. A similar thing as, a, as apparent, it's not technically happening, but if an object is moving toward an object that is emitting sound, because they are artificially hitting wave fronts faster than would naturally happen, so there's an apparent increase in frequency. Or as you walk past an object moving, uh, uh, emitting sound, you, uh, the wave fronts hit you less quickly, so there's an apparent decrease in frequency. This shift in frequency and wavelength caused by motion of the source or observer is called class of the Doppler, Doppler effect. What is it again? Doppler. Doppler effect. That's this shift in frequency and wavelength caused by motion of the source or observer. And that brings us to our second major equation for chapter 17, the Doppler effect equation. Michael, what was that equation you had to use multiple times in your homework? Mm -hmm. Absolutely equals f sub x um, times the quantity of uh, velocity of air plus the velocity of the object. Observer. Observer. Or plus velo over velocity of air minus velocity of source. Good. The frequency of the that the observer hears is equal to the, equal to the frequency of the source emits times speed of sound and air plus speed of the observer over speed of sound and air minus speed of the source. Um, we did say that these really are velocities, not just speeds, but velocities, because they can be either class positive, positive or negative, right? The direction affects whether we plug in positives or negatives. And uh, how do we tell whether we should plug in a positive or a negative, Kendall? Let's just take the observer, for instance. Ignore the source for a minute, just the observer. How do we tell whether the observer is positive or negative? Yeah. It's going if it's going toward the source, even if it's not gaining ground on the source, right? Let's say the source is running away, but if it's at least moving toward the source at all, the velocity is? Positive. And if it's going away from the source? Negative. What about the source? How do we tell whether the source is positive or negative, Audrey? Um, if it's going towards the observer, then it's positive. And if it's going away, then it's negative. Very good. Speed of sound and air, again, is going to depend on the temperature. We did have two memorized numbers, right? Zero degrees Celsius is this one. We said if it happens to be 25 degrees Celsius, this was actually in the textbook for you. Do you remember what that number was? 346. Yeah, 346. And if you want to be even more exact, 0. 0.346. It just happens to repeat those three digits a second time. And then, of course, it goes other decimals after that. But 25 degrees Celsius, that's a good one to have memorized also. Uh, remember, as far as memorizing the equation, O comes before S alphabetically, O comes before S alphabetically, positive comes before negative when we usually say positive and negative. So everything kind of follows a pattern there. Let's take a look then at the three problems you had for homework. Read number five. They're on page 265 for us, Kendall. And Paul's half of Jesus' are at 18 meters per second. And it's sound emitting. 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 1.30 meters per hertz tone. What frequency do you hear A as it approaches from B as it continues past you? Assume that there is a All right, now that's 1,000 hertz. That's a very high frequency. Um, and again, we're going to assume for our sake that the siren gets stuck at that frequency, right? One of the things that makes it a little hard, like a train horn all keep, keeps a consistent frequency. So when a train rushes by you, you kind of hear that or a car horn kind of has that same single frequency. Sirens are harder to tell. You can tell the loudness, but because they have an alternating pitch already, the frequency is already varied. It's harder to tell the drop-off, unless they're, you know, woo, 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 
you know, some, if they, we're gonna just have a stuck police siren of a thousand hertz. That is the frequency that um, is emitted. That is the frequency class of the source, right? That's not the frequency the observer hears, that is the frequency of the source. So we're gonna plug a thousand hertz in for F sub S. Now, Kendall, it said at the very end of the problem, assume it's a cold winter day here in Georgia. It's freezing outside, literally, zero degrees Celsius, which means the V sub air in both cases is going to be Now, the observer is you. You got pulled over. And, well, no, no, you didn't. You heard him coming, and so you pulled over off to the side to get out of the way because it mentions at the end he passes you. So he doesn't actually come up behind you and stop, which is good news, right? You see the flashing lights, you pull over, and then he blows past you to take somebody else down. It's like, yes, it's not me. All right, and then, of course, your conscience is like, but you shouldn't have been. Whatever you were just doing that made you think it was you. Anyway, because you know he didn't just want to stop and say hi. Maybe it's a tail light out. I don't know. Anyway, um, but you're a stopped car. So your speed class, you as the observer, your velocity is? I'm not even going to waste my time riding plus zero. Minus the police car is coming up behind you and you're hearing it approach, and it's moving at 18. Is that a positive or a negative 18, Kendall? Positive. It's a positive 18 that is subtracted. So we leave the subtraction, we just say minus the 18, which, what is 331.5 minus 18, anyone? I'll say 313.5. So you simply divided the 331.5 by the 313.5, multiply that by 1,000, and I probably should go look at my answer key because that'd be quicker, but I'm too lazy to go get it. And what frequency do you hear as police car comes up behind you approaching you? Class? 1057.4, which we can round off because we get three sig figs, it looks like, in this problem. 1060 hertz. Did we get that answer for the first part of number five? Now part B, the only difference is now the police car is not pulling you over, he blows past you. And once the police car passes you, his velocity class becomes negative. It becomes a negative 18 right here. So minus negative 18 becomes positive 18, which means we add the 18 to the 331.5 to get 349. 0.5, and so we divide that, 331.5, divided by 349.5, and multiply by the thousand, and uh, what do we get after he passes? And round it off to the three sig figs. 948 hertz. Audrey Michael, did you get both answers correct? And then Kendall didn't do it, but we're good to go. All right, let's take a look at problem number six, and I think this one, has a little bit of a twist to it. Yes, it does. Um, read it for us, if you would, Audrey. A car blows its horn as it approaches an intersection at 32 meters per second. If the frequency heard by an observer standing at the intersection is 275 hertz, what is the frequency of the horn? Assume a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now what makes this one interesting, notice the frequency, 275 hertz. Class, that's the frequency that is heard by the observer. And it's asking for the frequency of the horn, the horn being the source of the sound. We know F sub O, I want F sub S. How do I get F sub S by itself? Divide away what? The whole big fraction thing. But do we ever really divide fractions, class? What do we do? Multiply by their seven. Multiply by their seven. But remember, if we had something like um, x equals y times three-fourths, I can multiply by four-thirds on both sides, correct? I'm going to do the same thing here. f sub s is equal to f sub o times the reciprocal. V sub air minus V sub S over V sub air plus V sub O. Does that make sense? Did we do that, or at least we got this value and we divided it away? Okay, you didn't necessarily have to start with this equation. I want to because I think it's going to be a little easier for us. But we know the observed frequency was 275, right? The observer standing there hears 275 hertz. It's a 25 degree day outside. So what's the V sub air class? 
346 is what the book lists in the table. Yeah, by the time you've done all the math, the point 346 isn't going to make much difference anyway, but it's kind of neat that it repeats, and it helps to stick in our brain better. Um, the source was moving how fast? 32. 32. Is it going toward the observer? Yes, it approaches the intersection, and the observer is standing at the intersection, so it is approaching. So the 32 is a positive 32 that gets subtracted. The observer, it says, is just standing there, so plus zero. plus zero. Don't even bother with it. So when we subtract the 32, I'm getting a 314, 314 right there. And then we divide that by the 346. And multiply that by the 275. Again, the observer hears 275 hertz. That is not what the horn emits. The horn emits. And uh, am I got three sig figs again, or did they give me two? Give us three. So. Two, three, three, 250 point hertz. That's actually what came out of the, tr out of the uh, car horn. But the observer heard 275 because as it approached, the frequency increased. Did we get 250 hertz? Does it make sense now? Right? Did you plug it in as if the source were 275 finding the observer? Yeah, so just be careful on that. It gives me the opportunity to point that out. So you would have gotten somewhere around 300 hertz for your answer then? 303. 303? All right, questions on this. Kind of questions. All right, number seven. Read that for us, Michael. I thought a trip could have only been 50 meters per second. Sounds of sorry. The frequency of 712 hertz. What is the frequency? What frequency do motors share as they travel south at 35 meters per second? along the highway as they approach the truck and uh, as they, after they continue past it, assume the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. All right, so we've got a fire truck going north. Let me erase this here, give myself a little bit more room. Now I think it's odd, the fire truck is going north. It's only going 15 meters per second. Like, this is on a highway. Right? It's trying to get in. That's like 32, 33 miles an hour. It's just, we're in no rush, boys. Meanwhile, on the other side of the divided highway, because they're not pulling off, motorists travel south at 35 meters per second. So they're going, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour. The fire truck's in no hurry to get to a fire. They're in a hurry to get to wherever they're going. So anyway, they are both approaching each other, so both velocities starting out class are positive velocities. Okay, so a uh, fire truck emitting sound waves and um, frequency being emitted, it says is 712 hertz. So going back to the formula the way it's written, because we're actually finding what frequency is observed. Oh, temperature. What did it say about the temperature? Um, it's 30 degrees. What? It's 30 degrees. Oh, it's a warm day. 30 degrees. That's not super warm. It's in the 80s. Anyway. 30 degrees, so we gotta plug that in. And I'm gonna put this in the memory of the calculator. 30 plus the 273 divided by the 273. Take the square root, multiply that by 331.5. All right, so the memory, oh, I think this might have been the old memory value. Because huh. I think we had a 30 degree problem the other day. She got 349.23 blah, blah, blah meters per second. That's gonna be first. We have to account for the temperature uh, outside. So 349.23 meters per second. All right, so that is what's going to go in here in both cases. Both velocities are positive, so I'll just plug them in straight up. The observer's going 35. The source inexplicably only going 15. Maybe it just started driving. It's not even up to speed yet. I don't know. And the source is 712 hertz. So we add the 35. We divide by the quantity. We multiply that by 712. What do the motorists hear? It's putting out 712, but motorists are here in class. 818.5, round it off, two or three, three. 819 hertz, that's our answer for part A. So far so good? All right, now wavelengths behind the truck are exaggerated, even more so because you're kind of running away from the wave fronts. They're hitting you, but they're hitting you slower because you're running away, so to speak. And since both of them are going away now, class, both velocities are now negative. The only change, this becomes plus and negative or just negative, this becomes minus and negative or essentially positive. And so we work that out and we 
multiply, and what frequency is heard now that they are departing each other? 614. 614.26, round it off to 614 hertz. All right, do we get those answers for number seven? So the only one that messed us up was six, and it was because they gave us the source and asked for the, or gave us the observer, asked for the source multiplied by the reciprocal. All right, good to go. Any questions at all on Doppler effect? Let's do just a little bit more practice. Feels like students in here have it pretty well. Kendall opted to go with the homework pass today, and that's fine, but uh, missed out on a little bit of practice on her own. And uh, my experience is some students maybe struggle a little bit more. So we're gonna work through this handout quickly. If you're watching on YouTube, the handout is in the description of the video as normal. And uh, we have a rather unfortunate scenario that uh, has occurred. At your seats, five problems. Start from the very beginning, assuming 20 degrees for all problems. So you'll want to put a number in the memory of your calculator pretty early. It'll take a few minutes to work the handout, and then we'll go over it together. So hopefully, if you're struggling more than the people in this classroom, hopefully by the time we're done going over the handout, you'll be, feel a little bit better about this.
finished. Just a couple more minutes to be finishing. Just another minute or so to be finishing up. 